It's good news, bad news for England as far as the Six Nations against Scotland is concerned. Just like it's been good news, bad news this weekend in general. The bad news, there has been no Six Nations games. But the good news, that just stretches out the joy of the Six Nations Championship just that little bit longer. But the games are back on next weekend and England have got players out with injury and players returning from injury. So your thoughts on what this means for the team that Steve Borthwick should select. What team would you pick? that could actually go and win in Murrayfield, something that an England team hasn't been able to do very much of late in Calcutta Cup matches. The headlines, Alex Mitchell, scrum half, is out injured. A knee injury will keep him out at least during this Scotland game, maybe for the rest of the tournament. We'll wait and see what the assessment is on that injury, but he has been removed from England's squad and is now recovering from that injury. A real shame for him because he has established himself as the first choice number nine through the World Cup and through this Six Nations and in such a key area that's somewhere you wanted a bit of continuity does that open the door for Ben Spencer well we'll see maybe it opens the door for Harry Randall or little Harry Randall as he should be known to give him his full name little Harry Randall is in the squad will he make it into a match day squad I don't expect him to I expect him to be playing for England A on what's that Friday night against Portugal but training with England this week. That would be my thought. I would imagine it will be Danny Kerr or Ben Spencer, or the two of them will make up the matchday squad. But again, I'll get into that in a minute, and I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. The other headline for England, whilst Alex Mitchell is out, Ollie Lawrence is back. The last time there was a squad update, the 36 names were, were named, and Ollie Lawrence's name was not on it. And as a result, I did a whole video about what do England do with their midfield. Now, Manu Tuolangi is back, but Ollie Lawrence is still not back. Well, curveball thrown in. Ollie Lawrence is not on the rehab list anymore. He is in the squad proper. He will be training with them all this week. Should he, will he be picked for England in Murrayfield? I'll get onto that in a minute as well. Now, when I saw Ollie Lawrence's name was, was down, I thought, right, okay, well, Steve Borthwick is going to drop a centre then, isn't he? And I assumed Max Ajomo might get sent back to Bath and uh, thanked for his time, maybe play for England A um, Friday night. But no, Max Ajomo still in the England squad. And Will Muir, a winger, has been sent back to his club in place of Ollie Lawrence. Interesting. I think probably what that says to me is, and whether you agree or disagree with this, I'm just trying to analyse what's going on here. I think Steve Borthwick has seen what he wants to see from Will Muir and he's quite excited about Max Ajomo. And I think of the two of them, I mean, Will Muir has been fantastic for Bath this season. As a, as a physical specimen, he's been just awesome. Just running hard, working his nuts off for Bath, scoring some really good tries. I would say in terms of rugby IQ, at the top, top level, maybe he doesn't have what's, what's required. We'll see. I hope he gets a chance at some point. But just that top two inches... Is he a test match player? Remains to be seen. Hopefully he gets a chance. But Max Ajomo, I think, can be a test match player. He has got it up there. I think he has got the rugby brain that can thrive at the very top level. So I think that's why Steve Borthwick is keen to have him uh, involved in the squad for a little bit longer. But we'll see how that one plays out. Uh, elsewhere in the squad, well, Marcus Smith, he is still on the rehab list. So we will not be seeing him available for selection for Scotland by the look of it. Um, so maybe the following week against Ireland. Um, so another chance for George Ford and Finn Smith to battle over that 10 jersey. Would you make any changes there? And by the way, if you get value from the channel, if you appreciate the content, it will keep on coming. I've got loads of it coming. And um, as I say, I'll be up in Scotland this weekend. I'd love it if you would give a thumbs up on the channel, on the video. That will really help spread, boost the algorithm to help me reach new rugby fans. And um, if, if you would consider subscribing, that would be amazing as well. And finally, Manu Tuolangi. Now Ollie Lawrence is back. Where does that leave things in England's midfield? Because as I said, I did a video uh, the other day about this very topic and I came to the conclusion that without Ollie Lawrence, even though Manu Tuolangi has been someone that almost has been a, a temptation that every England coach for the last 10 years hasn't been able to resist despite his consistent and constant injuries, I would still have select Manu Tuolangi if Ollie Lawrence was unavailable. Now Ollie Lawrence is back in the squad. What now? Would you pick both of them? Would you pick both of them in a matchday squad? Or just one?
let me know down below in the comments. I'll tell you what I think the team should be in a minute. But let's just for a second digest the actual England squad. There it is, all 36 men. And yeah, I think you can start to read into what Steve Borthwick thinks about certain players. And that wing position is a really interesting one because he sent Will Muir back to his club. He hasn't picked Tom Roebuck in a matchday squad. He's another one of the new names on the wing. And Emmanuel Faye Waboso that he's picked in the matchday squads in rounds one and two so far, he's barely played. At, what is it, a combined two and a half minutes for Emmanuel Faye Waboso in two test matches that he's been selected in a matchday squad. Did he even get on in the game last weekend against, against Wales? Not even sure he did. If he did, it was for only for a few seconds. So, interesting. I, he doesn't seem to trust any other wingers at the minute. So, what does that mean? And, and the other thing that I'm thinking is, Max Ajomo has been sent... Sorry. Max Ajomo has been kept and Will Muir has been sent back to his club. We have seen Ollie Lawrence play on the wing internationally before. Is Steve both thinking about that again? I'd be so surprised if he did, but... It's not beyond the realms of possibility. So, again, tell me what you think. Here, for what it's worth, is what I am predicting Steve Borthwick's England team will be for next weekend. So, again, this isn't what I would necessarily pick. Although, actually, in the case of the pack, I don't really have a problem with that. I'd, I'd go with that 1-8. to eight. I'm quite happy. I think that is what he will do. George Martin is available straight back in. That guy... He is a tight headlock. He will just go around hitting people, hitting rucks, carrying hard. He is such a destructive force. Very excited to see George Martin back. He looked great for England during the World Cup. And you sort of thought with Courtney Laws retiring, uh, but with and with Dave Ribbons going off to play in France, well, you can't replace Courtney Laws, but with George Martin, at least, you've got someone that you can pass the mantle on to. And I think... George Martin could start six and Ollie Chesham start lock. That that could happen. So George Martin is a kind of like for like Courtney Law's re replacement. I think the, that will those will be the eight names. What number they're wearing on their back in the case of Martin and Chesham, we'll wait and see. As for the back line, it's all about that midfield partnership, isn't it? Well, actually, scrum half. Could Ben Spencer go from being out the squad to the starter and Danny Kerr kept as an impact kind of player? I'm actually hoping that is the case. I'd like to see Ben Spencer start. I think he will probably start Danny Kerr, next cab off the rank. But, hey, he didn't even pick Alex Mitchell in his World Cup squad. And Alex Mitchell got in because of the Jack Van Portfleet injury and, and ended up starting for the whole World Cup. So it could well be Ben Spencer. I'd quite like to see that. I imagine George Ford will continue. A lot of people saying Finn Smith they want to see given a chance. And the midfield, that's what it's all about. Ollie Lawrence will be in. I think he will probably be picked at 12. Fraser Dingwall probably dropped. That would be my guess, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was Dingwall Lawrence. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Tuolangi Lawrence. I could see all of those things happening. This is just my best guess about what it should be. What would you do? Again, in the comments down below. And I'm sorry, you can't see the bench, can you? Uh, I think one of the casualties of George Martin being back will be Alex Coles. And because you've got Chesham or, or Martin on the flank who can play second row I think you can have two back rows on the bench and in any case Chandler Cunningham South has slotted in at lock at club level as well so I imagine Ethan Roots will drop to the bench Cunningham South will continue and um, Alex Coles will drop out I just have this one I just have this one final question I've put Faye Waboso there but for the I, I just mentioned that Steve Borthwick doesn't appear to trust Emmanuel Faye Waboso has only given him a couple of minutes. It's a little bit like if you remember when Dan Robson used to be picked for England, would only get like a minute or two at the end and then was just cut completely. And it's the same with England's hookers in recent years. He would hardly give Jack Walker any game time. Actually, I've made a mistake there, haven't I? Luke Cowan Dickey. That will be Luke Cowan Dickey instead of Theo Dan, I imagine, because um, he's back as well. So made a mistake there. But no, what I was saying about Emmanuel Faye Waboso. Because I don't know if Steve Borthwick totally trusts him. I wonder if Manu Tuolangi may be picked on the bench. And Ollie Lawrence, if, an in, if a winger went down, then Ollie Lawrence may move to wing and Manu Tuolangi come on. It's just a thought I've got in my mind. But maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into things and Faye were both so not being given any game time. But there you go. 
more po I'd, I'd say there's more positive than negative for England there. That the sight of Ollie Lawrence in the squad and George Martin, big boosts for me. And I think England have got in in Ben Spencer a guy that can keep the tempo and control a game in the way that Alex Mitchell does. But we'll see. Danny Kerr's not too shabby, is he? To be fair, can England go and do it in the Calcutta Cup? I think they can. Will they? Uh, I'm not so sure. Um, Scotland are going to bring it. Well, I, I know that I will be there to cover it and I'll be taking egg chasers on the road. So hopefully you'll be with me for that one. Hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, leave your comments. I'll see you on the next one.